And we're live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Rakefit Abergill, filmmaker, actor, and all-around cool person. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for fun. coming. Yes. <laughs> I think you're moving up in, uh, I think Michael Epstein might have the, the record for most appearances, but I think you're, you're moving up there. Oh, good. I got it. <laughs> We can't let Michael have that. <laughs> we, can, yeah, that's always a good motto. We can't let Michael win. Can't let Michael have that. No. <laughs> Sick. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> you have a short film coming up still. If you want to give people an idea of what it is about, and we'll play uh, some videos later on. Yes, sure. Um, okay, so I, I don't have like I don't have my pitch down for this. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Still is a short film um, based around. Um, I had a I had a miscarriage a couple of years ago. Uh, we can start with that, and um, obviously it was a very tragic, hard time. And I decided to write about it, and that's where still came from. Um, still is about a woman who uh, has a miraculous discovery of a baby in a forest, and she decides to start kind of mothering the baby. Um, and then one day the baby disappears and everyone says things to her like, you know, don't worry about it. It's really common and you can always try again. And, you know, all the well-meaning things that people might say to somebody who lost a pregnancy. Um, but they sound a little absurd when you're talking about an actual child that has been born and, and, and is alive. Um, and the whole idea behind it, um, and then it triggers her, her memory of um what had actually happened to her which was a very tragic thing um so it's very sad it's a little horrific um of course because that's what i do um and uh and it's basically i wanted to write it to to show people what it feels like um to be in that position and uh yeah a little all over the place. I've been running this campaign for six days, and I feel like I'm on another planet. But yes, that's the basic idea. Yeah. And by the way, I'll have the link up for the um, for the campaign, and it's at uh, seedandspark.com slash fun slash still short film. Yes. Hashtag story, which is kind of long. But we'll we'll have the, the link up I don't there think you need the hashtag story. You can oh, just okay. do still short film, and it'll take you there. Yeah. yeah. So um, when I first met you and first talked to you, you mentioned about like your inspiration to start writing was to write like stories for yourself, you know? Uh, yeah. To, to act in. Yeah. For right. me to do stuff. Yeah. Because, um, well, I'm an actor first. I, mm -hmm. I will always say that no matter if I, even if I stop acting, I'll always say I'm an actor first. Um, and I was doing a lot of comedy and, and like kids TV shows and sitcoms and great things, amazing things that I love to do. Um, but I just kind of got pigeonholed into this kind of comedic role. And I wasn't getting auditions or parts that were a little bit more serious or dark or to me fun. <laughs> um, and so I decided to kind of write my own stuff, which Jackson Love, um, I think I met you when we did, when I did Boo. Boo, yeah. Because it was at, um, in, in Massachusetts. Happenstance, yeah, Happenstance. Yes, so Happenstance that. Horror Fest, I love it. It was the best, it was so much fun. Um, and that's where I met you and you gave me my award and I was like, oh, and then we became best friends. Um, and so Jackson Love was the first one that I did and I wrote it to be like a dark role for me and then Boo as well. And then with this one, you know, I'm directing it like I did with Boo and I don't really, it's hard to direct and act at the same time and produce and market and everything else. Yeah. Um, and I thought about giving it to somebody else, but um both because of my needing to act and also like it being my story to some degree i just couldn't i just couldn't do that <laughs> i just couldn't do it so i'm gonna make it happen one way or another to do both again <laughs> so how long ago um did you decide to write about it um so this happened in june of oh god 2021 um and it probably took me like a year. So probably a, like six or seven or eight months ago, something like that, maybe a year ago, almost. Um, it took me a long time to write about it. I wasn't, 
I, I wrote in my journal a lot, you know, about my feelings and stuff like that, but I could not find a way to make it, to turn it into art or creativity of any kind. Cause I was just devastated by the whole thing. Um, and then when I sat down to just kind of, I was like, I just want to write like a metaphor for what I'm feeling right now. Just, I just want to like, so that people get it that maybe don't. Um, and it came out really easy, <laughs> like probably the easiest thing I've ever written in my life. Um, of course I did revisions and I, and I rewrote some of it later on and whatever, but the I, initial writing of it came out like just really easy. It just, just came out it was almost like it wrote itself which is it's not how my other projects <laughs> were yeah. at all um did, yeah did you go back to any of the, the journal writing to look what you wrote you know over that last year um i you know i didn't to write it i it was all still very fresh for me mm -hmm. so i didn't really need to but i do plan to do that before i do my shot list and start learning my lines and stuff like that because i want to tap back into the original pain unfortunately um i know that it's kind of masochistic of me to even be doing this but i felt that me revisiting that pain was worth it if i could help other women or people or whoever men in their relationships um that are dealing with this kind of loss if i could help them in some way make them feel heard understood um you know just kind of tell their story so that other people can can commiserate or empathize with them um then it's worth it to me uh, when i'm you said, willing to do it <laughs> yeah when you said you start you first started to write like as a uh, as a metaphor were you were you sure at that time like i'm actually going to write this as a script and make it or were you thinking well maybe i'll just write this and it'll help me in some way or yeah did, did you i 100 percent was not thinking i was going to make it um just because the idea of going through everything i'm doing now to, to create it about one of like the worst things that's ever happened to me in my life seemed really daunting. Um, but my first idea was just, I remember thinking like when I was pregnant for the very short time that I was pregnant, I, it was like, I was given this like gift from somewhere from nowhere. Cause it was an accident. I didn't intend to get pregnant. Um, but I was very happy about it. So it was a very happy accident to me. Um, and I felt like I had been given this like chance at motherhood that I've always wanted. And it was like, Oh my God, how did this happen? And of course I was scared and nervous, but also like elated. And I felt really caught, like I was nervous about the pregnancy and everything, but I was like, I felt like this is what's supposed to be, you know, it felt like really meant to be. Um, and then when I lost the baby, it was just gone. Like everything that I thought that I was going to get, and have finally after 42 years of, of living um, and everything I had imagined that my life was gonna change and I was gonna, this was gonna change and I was gonna move and I had to quit my job and I was gonna do different things and all of the stuff that I started to prepare for this life with this child that I was starting to prepare for excitedly um, was just taken away from me. Um, and, <laughs> so that's kind of where the script came from. I thought, what if I just was like walking around in the forest one day and there was just like a crying baby coming from somewhere. And I just was like, I'm like, I wanted, I was like, that's how it felt. Like there was just this baby and I'm like, I'm going to take this baby and I'm going to make this baby my baby. And, um, and then, you know, I, I, then I thought, and what if it just disappears? Like, just like that, because that's what happened to me. And, um, and so I, that's kind of where the script idea came from. And then it kind of morphed into a kind of a metaphor for the whole thing and how nightmarish and, and dreamlike it was to me, right? Like at first it was this dream that like, oh my God, like how did I get this baby? This is amazing. And then it was like this nightmare that like everything I ever wanted was just like ripped away from me. And, you know, not to get too graphic because I don't want to make any but it's too uncomfortable, but it was a very painful experience, both emotionally and physically and scary and horrifying and just things that nobody ever talks about. And nobody ever says that, you know, I thought I knew a lot. I, I was a women's studies minor in college. Like I thought I knew a lot about women's health and women's issues and I knew nothing until this happened to me. So yeah, that's basically where it came from.
Yeah, and I, I would assume it's something no one would really know unless they've actually gone through it. Yeah, because people don't talk about it so much. And, you know, after this happened to me, I... I just went to Facebook and Instagram and posted about it. And I didn't even really think twice about like, is this going to make people feel weird or is this the right thing to do? Or is this too personal? I just did it because I needed people's love <laughs> and support. I just needed it. I was getting it from people around me in my life, of course, but like, I don't have a partner. I wasn't with anybody. I, I, um, I, I just needed people to understand how much I was hurting. And I've never been the kind of person who only posts happy things on my social media. Right. I post happy things all the time, but I also post my real things because I want to present myself in a way that's real. And that's really important to me that I'm honest and real. And I'm not uh, like, look at my amazing life and like, oh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes right. it is amazing sure. and sometimes it's horrible. Um, and, and I'm just the kind of person who's always going to, is, I was always going to share that. But when I did, a lot of people came to me privately and on the post itself to tell me that they had experienced miscarriages or stillbirths or even like infant loss. Um, and some of these people hadn't ever told anybody ever, ever outside of their family ever. Um, some people hadn't told me that I knew I knew them for a very long time and I never knew this about them. And I realized that a it's very common like very common and B nobody's talking about it. And why not? It's something that is happening so often to so many people and it's really affecting and traumatizing people and people are afraid to talk about it. Um, and I don't know if it's coming from shame. I know I felt a lot of shame. I felt like, Oh, what did I did wrong? What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I, you know, this is my fault, which it wasn't, but that's how I felt. Um, and also you feel bad kind of putting other people on the spot and making them feel uncomfortable because you know that it's a taboo subject that makes other people uncomfortable. Cause it's like women's stuff, which is a, an uncomfortable subject for most people. It's even a term <laughs> women's problem. Right. Right. right women's stuff. <laughs> which is a, is a long, like long, long list long of what list that could mean. Right. Stuff, right. It's also like related to sex, which is like another taboo thing. And it's also related to death, which is another taboo thing, like grieving and death. So it's like this, this like perfect storm of very difficult things to talk about. But I have never been one to shy away from making people uncomfortable. <laughs> I like that. I don't care. I to me, it's like the ends justify the means you know like if i make some people uncomfortable fine you know you don't have to listen you don't have to watch you know if it's really so bad for you you know don't but for the people who really need to hear that they're not alone and that there's someone else that's gone through it um it means everything like hearing people's stories meant everything to me because i realized god everything i'm feeling is normal like like all the pain and the shame and the just all of it, the trauma is normal. I mean, I talked to some women who had 12 miscarriages or, you know, like horrible things that they've just kept trying. And it, I can't even imagine, you know, like if I were to get pregnant again, which I would love to, I don't know if it's ever gonna happen, but um, I'd be terrified every single second of it <laughs> because of what happened the first time. And to have gone through that multiple times, I don't even know how somebody survives something like that. I really don't. Or to be pregnant until you're six or seven months and then have a stillbirth or something or have or have the baby and then they die of like SIDS or something, God forbid. Like, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And none of them are, it's not like, oh, because I lost my baby at around eight or nine weeks, that's better than somebody who lost it, you know, later. It's yeah. not better, but it just only gets worse progressively i'm sure more difficult and and horrible <laughs> yeah the uh, so. uh i just want to say about uh, social media because usually when people talk about social media it's usually in a negative light but um you, you said it was in a positive way you know people uh you know try to help you and and uh they talk to you and also you help them by uh you know talking about it yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of bad things about social media, um, for yeah, sure. And, yeah. and there are many times where I'm like, oh, I got to get off of here. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand. You know, I'm sure we all feel that way. And I know many people who have just 
gotten just right. said forget it um but you know i use it a lot for promotion for my projects and my career and stuff like that so for that reason alone it's hard for me to get off but also especially during the lockdown and during covid and every, the whole pandemic like it was the only way i could connect with people um and it became like I made a lot of friendships that way. And, and there's a lot of people that I meet at film festivals that live so far from me that if I didn't have social media, I wouldn't be able to keep up those friendships. I wouldn't be able to keep up with what they're doing and congratulate them on things and support them when something bad happens. And um, so I think there's a lot of good to social media. It's just, you gotta filter through the shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh there's a lot of people uh, in the various chats. By the way, we're streaming. Uh, this is the first time we're streaming uh, without your head everywhere. So it's on YouTube, multiple Facebook accounts. Um, so people are sending in um, uh, messages. But uh, through this, uh, if they do it through different Facebooks, I can't see their name. So I only see Facebook user. So uh, oh, just I for see. heads up, someone. Um, I think there's a way around that, but I have no idea about that yet. But. Um, so if you send in a, a question or a comment, just put your name in front of it so so I can uh, attribute you uh, yes. to the message. Yes, I'm trying to find it too on mine so I can see maybe I know who they are, but we'll see. Yeah, because we have sorry for your loss, hun, but I'm not uh, positive you said oh, that. Well, thank you to whoever that. said that regardless. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and it yeah. Is, this is very sad. I don't mean to bring you guys down. <laughs> I feel so bad, but... Here we are. <laughs> was it, was it a, what was the experience like writing about it, it as a story? Um, and not, and not like, you know, a verbatim story, you know, like you said, it's a. Uh, Cause it's not, it's not right, my right. story. It's mm -hmm. not like, it's not what happened to me. Thank God actually, because in the, the character, I honestly think her story is worse. Um, but it felt really good to write about it. It just felt like I was, I just kept thinking, how do I explain to people how this feels how can i because it's almost impossible it's like how do i show them my heart being broken you know like how do i do that and so i thought when i wrote this i thought oh my god if i make this i can just be like here this this is this is how it feels it feels like this um and you can visualize it and you can see it um which i hope you know, when we shoot it, that's kind of the idea. I want it to be that, like, you can feel it. You can be in this character's body almost and feel the pain that she's feeling and the confusion and the and the grief and the trauma um, and just how horrifying the whole thing is. So, and kind of like with Boo, I mean, Boo is about addiction, which is another topic that has touched my life in many ways. And... I really felt like I wanted to show people like, this is how it feels like you, when you're addicted to something, even if it's someone you love, it doesn't stop you sometimes. Like if it's like, oh, it's the drugs or the, or the person you love, a lot of times people pick the drugs because it's so powerful. Um, so in that, in the same sense, I wanted this to be, you know, a way to be like, do you get it now? <laughs> like, do you understand? And also for people who do get it to be like, oh, thank you for showing how I feel. And for, you know, that now I can show this to people and be like, this is what it felt like for me. This, like this confusion and this like loss and, and everything. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it was uh, Cindy Sanabria um, from Horror. Um, she has a website, Horror. I forget, I'm sorry, I forget the name. Um, Rachel Moser, uh, when you share it, you get told about it by so many people that you never heard about it from. That's so true. And I mean, people, even a couple people, a couple friends of mine, of course, I won't mention that who they are, but it happened to them at the same time it happened to me. Like they were going through it at the same time. And I didn't even know. You know, and I didn't know till much later when I posted about it and they came to me and they're like, you know, we were going through this at the same time. Um, and it's crazy because you just don't know what people are going through, you know, like you have no idea. And if they're not someone who feels open to talk about stuff, you may never know and you may never understand that, that that's something that they're dealing with. Um, oh, it's a horror tour guide is, uh, is at their website, by the way. Oh, nice. 
So you have a lot of people involved that uh, that I know, like uh, yeah. Michael Epstein and Sophia Cassiola. <laughs> and um, so how, how do you go about uh, gathering your team together to, uh, to create this? Um, well, I go and I try to find the best people in each of the job positions that I can get, you know, and that's what I got with Michael and Sophia for sure. Um, I got so lucky that A, they were wanting to do it, B, that they were available to do it because they're so busy, um, and C, that they just, they just care. Like, they're just, I don't know. I can't say enough good things about Sophia and Michael. They are very talented, as you know, because you've been in their films. Um, and and But they're also just, like, genuinely nice people who just want to make art and work with good people and do good things um you know when we did boo they sh i tell people this all the time i don't know if they don't want me to but they shot my teaser for free because they love me i guess i don't know <laughs> or they just wanted something to do or they had nothing to do that day <laughs> um but it was like i that could have cost me so much money and and it might have been impossible to even do if had they had not done that for me and of course i paid them back by working on their stuff for free or whatever but yeah um but, you know, and with this, like, they've gone above and beyond, which is, they're also co-producers on the film because they're going above and beyond. They're not just doing their jobs as cinematographer and sound. Um, they've been going on scouts with me and, you know, talking about logistics with me and helping me figure out things that I need. And, um, yeah. And then as far as, like, everybody else, like, I always, I never want to be the most knowledgeable person on my team. Never. I want to be, because I'm not, I'm not, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. And I don't ever want to think that I know everything. And there's so many people who know so much more than me than me in their department. So I want to get who knows the best about their department. And if they know more than me, great. Because then I can defer to them and be like, what do I do? What do I need? Um, you know, and I can learn from them also. So I have no ego about it. I do. I definitely don't need to be the smartest person in the room. And I don't want to be, in fact. Um, I want to be able to learn from other people's experience and and also bring on the best people I can possibly bring on. Um, so I got really lucky with Sophia and Michael. Um, also, my other producer, Joseph Stotman, um, was, a, I guess, well, a, I don't I know. Him a, yeah. You don't know him. I don't know uh, him. Uh, they're awesome. Um, I'm getting used to their new, their new pronouns, so I apologize if I mess it up, but they are an amazing person. Um, and I met them at um, a, a film festival, and they were a big fan of my work. And they came to me and said, uh, you know, whatever your next film is, I don't even care what it is. <laughs> I love the way you storytell. I want to give you money for it, and I want to help. I don't want to just like be up someone who pledges. I want to like actually produce with you. Um, and they did. So they came on board. They've been a, such a support to me. Um, they're the ones who secured our real life baby that we're going to have. I'm going to ask who, who, by the way, has an amazing bio. I'm a big fan of their bio. Yeah. On the <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's like, I've not done anything yet. But. <laughs> Right. But this is exciting. I mean, the poor thing had a job three weeks into his life, <laughs> right. um, which I felt bad about. <laughs> um, so his mom and my producer, Joseph, are good. We're very, very good friends. And um, Joseph was like, yeah, my friend just gave birth a few weeks ago. I'm just going to ask her. <laughs> I was like, OK, like if I just gave birth, I don't know if I'd be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but thank God, Lindsay is an amazing person and is willing to let us use her son for a very short time in the film. Um, and she's coming down here from Northern California and um, she's been so supportive sharing about it. And I think she's excited. And I don't know if Cooper's excited, but maybe one day he will be. Um, he's so cute and I cannot wait to like hold him and hug him and kiss him because <laughs> I love babies so much. Um, and I'm just very grateful to both Joseph and Lindsay for, for arranging all of that. Um, obviously we're going to use the baby in a way that is safe for the baby. <laughs> right, right, um, right. and, and probably not that much. And we have a doll to kind of fill in for, for his, <laughs> for his scenes when we don't really need him to be, you know, awake. Um, but, uh, but it was important to have a real live baby. Cause I think 
I want to see that. I want to see those moments. And I think it's important to see that connection because even though my baby was not a live baby and it wasn't even really a baby yet, it was just kind of cells, I guess. Um, I felt really connected to, to, to him. And again, I'm saying him and we didn't even know if he was a boy or a girl yet, but I felt like he was a him. So I named him Max Jacob and I just had to like make him a real thing um, because it was real to me and I didn't want to feel like it was not real. Um, so anyway, it's important to see that connection in the film and, um, and you know, Cooper's going to have like an IMDb page before he's even like six months old. Right, so right. good for him. He's going he's gonna to be higher on the IMDb star rating than me. I, right. If he ever becomes like a really famous actor, I'll be like, I got him first. I saw, yeah, I saw the, I saw the, I saw the potential in the. (laughs) His only qualification was he was born, and his mom was willing to let him. Yeah, they don't need to know all all the incidentals, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So So, yeah, I want to ask you about uh, the festivals since you meant you you. Met some of those people through the festivals. So first of all, the importance of uh, festivals. And also stuff I don't know about. I know the festivals. That's how I've gotten involved in different things. But um, having a script in festivals, like, um, what's it, ha, ha, what's the benefits of that? Um, people ask me that all the time, and I, I have to say it's a mixed bag, right? Because it depends on the festival. There are some festivals that having a script in it is a big deal. A because it's a really big festival or something. Um, and it's really important for whatever reason. So it's a nice laurel to have and it helps you raise money for the film, et cetera. Or um, festivals like Genre Blast, for instance, which is one of my favorite festivals. They, and there's many of them. Also, which I've never Horror been to. Show. I'm hoping to go to. Yeah. Oh, my God. You have to. And come and do your show there. Oh, my God. It would be amazing. I love I have nothing to do with their festival, but I might as well because I love them so much. <laughs> um, and I talk about them all the time to everybody. Um, but it's just such a great, it's like film camp and I love it. Um, but they also do table reads. So does Vancouver horror show. They do them on zoom, which is amazing because then I don't have to go to Vancouver, which I don't usually get to <laughs> right, go. Right. Nothing against I Vancouver. Love, I assume. I just, would love know. to go right, to Vancouver. Right. I love yeah. Vancouver. I wanted to move to Canada like my whole life, but, um, but it's hard to get there sometimes. Exactly, so yeah. it's nice that we, they have them on zoom so that I can participate. They always have great actors. Um, they're always really well done. Um, so if the festival does table reads, to me, that means they're a, an amazing festival. Um, there's also festivals like Nightmares Film Festival, another great festival yep. that they will send out. Um, they do this thing called the final list, where if you're one of the selected scripts, you can send in your log line um, and your email address, and it goes out to everybody involved in the festival, all the filmmakers, and then people can contact you like, hey, can I read your script? Hey, oh, I'm interested in this. Maybe I want to make it. Maybe I want to do it. So there's another time that it's, um, you know, it's helpful. Um, then there are some festivals that, you know, they take scripts, but then it's like you're there and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because there's no table read there's no um so no unless, list going out to right how, how does anyone even know besides just like uh, they might happen to see the uh, na- a list of names or something yeah i mean i've like i've been at a couple fests like that where i'll win an award and then people will come up to me and be like oh can i read your script because i want you know i won the award so they want to they want to read it um or if I don't win, which happens also, I'll go up to people like, do you want to read my script? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, send me your movie, I'll send you my script. And, you know, but I, you know, it's hard to get people to read scripts. Um, I don't, I'm really bad at reading scripts, even though, you know, I try to so that it's fair for everybody. Um, oh my God, that reminds me. Oh no, I did it. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, somebody else, I was supposed to read somebody's <laughs> script. Sure. And I thought, oh my God, I really dropped the ball, but I did it. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, so it just depends. But even if, sorry, this is like my headphone is hurting my ear. Um, even if, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me, um, even if it's not a great festival for a screenwriter, it's there still is a benefit because a um, you get a free pass to the festival usually. Um, so it's like okay, I can go and I don't have to pay to go. I mean, you pay for everything, you know, to get there and everything, but um, but you don't have to pay for your yeah. pass. 
Um, also, it's just always a good networking opportunity, both yeah. for business and for friendships. And for me, sometimes they're interchangeable and sometimes they're separate, but either way, they're a huge plus to, to going to a festival. If you're gonna submit to festivals, you know, I don't. I can't always go to all of them. And I sometimes I submit to some that I know I'm not gonna be able to go to. And some people would say, don't do that. Cause if you're not gonna go, then don't bother. But you know, it depends. Like there are various reasons why I would submit to different places. Um, but if you can go, it makes all the difference. I mean, all the difference. Like a laurel's a laurel, fine. But what you get from actually being there is the part that's like really priceless. Um, and honestly, everybody that's worked on my projects and everybody that's working on this one, with the exception of a couple of people, I've met at film festivals. Um, and you get to know like who's good at what they're doing, you know, who's making good stuff. Yeah, because you can, you can, there's the proof. You can look up and watch it. Yeah. Right. And you could be like, oh, this is like a really, you know, this is a really good, she's a really good cinematographer. And, right. you know, oh, that's a good point, really too, because e even if you don't particularly like a short, you could still tell if that maybe it didn't work for you for whatever reason. But you could tell like it shot well or there's, you know, there's potential there. There's something about it. Oh, my it. God. Yeah. Like sometimes oh, I've seen a lot of shorts that look beautiful, like flawlessly gorgeous. I mean, I would give them cinematography awards all day long but the script is terrible, <laughs> you know, or something. And, but still you get, to, I'd be like, I want to know who that cinematographer is because if I can find a good script or write a good script, then that cinematographer can put their good cinematography to use, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's really invaluable. Also, it's fun. I mean, I'm not a big go out and party kind of person. I yeah. never was. Um, in fact, I really like to stay home and the lockdown was like, the best thing ever for me. I loved it. Um, but when I'm at these festivals, that's my social time. That's when I stay up all night and hang out. And I'm not a big drinker, so I don't really drink, but I'll just hang out with people while they're drinking. Um, and it's just fun and it's just really good. And it's nice to like meet people and also to get to know the film festival directors um, because they're usually filmmakers themselves. Um, and you, there's a lot to learn from them and there's a lot to learn from the other filmmakers there. So I think if you can go to film festivals with or without a project, go with a project for sure. Go without a project, still fun, still a good time. And you get to see some good stuff and you see films that you would never see anywhere else. Never. And like things, and there, some people are doing things that should be seen other places, but it's not, um, and the only place you can see it are at these festivals. Um, so, like some of the best films I've ever seen in my life, I've seen at film festivals, for sure, yeah. that I never would have seen anywhere. Yeah, I, I say all the time, I think any level, if you uh, just go as a, a fan to watch movies, or um, if you're involved in any in any way, I, I definitely agree with all that. And like, you'll see some stuff that'll eventually be on Shutter, maybe the next year or whatever. But like you said, sometimes you see stuff that's so good and it never goes anywhere, which it's kind of bittersweet. It's cool that you got to see it, but uh, sometimes Nobody it makes you wonder, like, why, why didn't this ever go anywhere? But yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is always sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially with shorts. Now there's a few more places that just, shorts yeah, can more, live. It used to be they would just disappear or maybe pop up on someone's YouTube, but there are some platforms now. Right. Now there's actually a platform. I mean, Boo is on Alter, so there's that, you know, and there's different other platforms and anthologies and DVDs and, you know, collections of different kinds. Um, so you can find them now, not just on YouTube. Not to say there's anything wrong with YouTube, sure. but it's nice um, also to, like, for the filmmaker to have made a little bit of money back, you know, yeah, yeah. like it's negligible money, <laughs> especially with like Amazon, who I love that I, my stuff is up on there, but I think we make like $6 a year on, <laughs> on like everything. Right. Um, Michael Epstein likes to talk about. Right. About right. The, yeah. From understanding, it used to be a, a, a valuable uh, place for independent filmmakers, but those days are, uh, are I right, miss yeah. those days. I never got those days. <laughs> I, I arrived way after those days. But, you know, I, I don't make any of these. I haven't made a feature yet, so I can't speak to that. But for my shorts, I don't make them to make money. Like, they're not going to make money. Um, I make them for the, for the sake of art, or mostly I make them for the sake of the message. 
for me, they all have to have a message of some kind. It doesn't have to be as <laughs> depressing as this particular one. Um, but I want it to have a meaning and I want people to see it and it makes them think about something in a different way. Um, so for me, that's the most important and I'm never going to make the money back. Never, um, <laughs> never. And that's okay. That's okay. Which is why we do the crowdfunding. Cause otherwise I wouldn't be able to make the movie at all because I don't have that kind of money to that even if I wanted to, I couldn't spend that kind of money. Um, and, you know, and then I end up spending a lot of money out of pocket to do all of the festivals and the marketing and all that stuff, because that just, but at least that's like, it trickles in, you know, you do a few festivals and then you, and then I work a little more and then I pay off those credit cards and then I go back to festivals and I work a little more and I pay off those credit cards. And, you know, look, I, I don't, luckily, I guess, I don't know, maybe not luckily, I don't have anybody else really to spend any money on. So any money I make goes towards my career. And, and my friendships and going to these festivals and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, one more thing about the festivals. What advice would you give someone who's never been to one? And then they have they have a project. What ones to like look out for? Because there's so many, um, it would be hard to choose which ones like is viable. I would say for sure ask her if you know any other filmmakers, ask them like people who've been to festivals because they will know and they'll be able like I have a long list if, if anybody comes to me I'm happy to send you my list of like festivals I love mm -hmm. um and there's many of them that I love um but I would say a few things one if they're charging you for like to like enter best actor category best director <laughs> category right. but like if there's like a billion awards and they're charging you to like enter to, to even awards, I, I actually didn't know that one but <laughs> run i mean run it's not it's not it's not worth your it's not worth your money um also if they're charging you to screen your film or if they're which i've seen or if they're charging you to go to parties at their at oh, their wow. festival, which I've also seen yeah. and fell for in the very beginning, which I will never do again. Um, anything where they're really charging you for stuff like <laughs> well, there's that. There's a whole list crazy. of charges. Right. Or, yeah. yeah, or you know, or if they have like just a billion awards, you're like, okay, so it's like a it's a Laurel Mill type of a thing. Um, there are a lot of festivals that are totally legitimate amazing festivals that are there to promote your work and you and have a good time and screen your films. Um, and then there's a lot more, I would say maybe 80% of them that are just trying to take your money and they know that you're desperate and you don't know, and you don't know any better. Um, it's also why I started my, I started a, a, a kid acting school a long time ago for the same reason, because there's so many people preying on children, act, kid actors and their parents who don't know any better. So it's the same thing with these film festivals. They know you don't know any better. They know you are just like, oh, this looks, you know, just because the word can is in the name of the festival doesn't mean it's at the can film festival. Just that's <laughs> right, my right. number yeah. one. Like, you're probably not going to screen your short film at the Cannes Film Festival. I, I'm sure there's 1%. Somebody is. Obviously, somebody is. Right, right. But it's Most likely, you probably have to know someone to begin with. But yeah, 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 I mean, you know, Sundance also. Now, I always submit to Sundance because I consider it my tax. I call it the Sundance tax. I know I'm fucking get in, but it's kind of like playing the lottery, which you do really well. <laughs> you should submit to Sundance because you win all the time. Yeah, and I don't know how Michael you do it. To get the other. Yeah, um, Michael would disagree with me on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's very anti like, Sundance. Not but yeah, yeah. Sundance. Um, <laughs> but I don't care. I'm always like, whatever, maybe. You never know. It's like, you know, lottery. <laughs> sure. But and, only, and, only and if you don't do it, you know you won't get in. So You're 100% <laughs> not getting in if you don't right, send it. Right, right. So I'm like, you know what? It's worth it. It's my little tax for the year. And if it gets in, amazing. And if it doesn't, which it probably won't. Okay. Um, what, what did I lose? You know? Um, but I wouldn't do that for many festivals like that. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't, that would not be where I would submit stuff. Also, you want to look at like what festivals are playing movies like yours, right? Just because it's a horror movie doesn't necessarily mean that horror festival will want it. Like I had like Jackson love is more of a psychological horror mm -hmm. and I didn't know. And I submitted it to just anything that had a horror in the title. And many of them want, you know, like body parts, cutting up and blood and, you know, <laughs> right, stuff right. that I don't do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just don't, no, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not what I do. Yeah. 
Um, and of course my film didn't get in because that's not the kind of movie they want to play. Um, you know, where, and also, but it did get into festivals that are not horror festivals that maybe had like an, you know, an after. Like a midnight showing. Yeah, or, a midnight yeah. showing or, or a horror block or something. Um, so I would say, look at the festivals, look at the kinds of movies that they're playing, look at the kinds of movies that are winning, check them out, see, you know, like what they like. And, and, and that way you can direct your submissions more specifically instead of just doing what I did with my first film, which was literally throw everything at the wall and see what stuck. And then I realized for Boo that, okay, well now I know what stuck. <laughs> so I can choose from the, the sticking ones um, and, and go, and I'm going to be even more, you know, with this, because this is also like, it is a horror movie, but it's also not a horror movie. It's also very much just a, a drama and it's just kind of a sad kind of a sad um psychological drama um so i want to really be careful about where i submit because there are some places that are you know even if it's the best movie ever they're just not going to take it because it's not their thing mm -hmm. well i mean that's the thing uh, it's actually a thing i like about horrors there's so many different uh types but i'm sure. someone who, who depending on my mood I, I i'll watch something really bloody and crazy or something more thought-provoking but i understand not everyone is, is like that I mean, honestly, okay, I mean, I've said this on every interview since the beginning of time, but I don't, I, I've never been a huge fan of horror movies. <laughs> the interview's <laughs> over. No, no, but... <laughs> I know. No, be only because I'm a scaredy cat. Not because uh -huh. they're not good or well-made. They are. They are. They are good. But over the last few years, being at hundreds of horror film festivals and seeing lots and lots of horror movies, that I, more than I've ever seen in my entire life, I have to say I get it. <laughs> like I get it like uh -huh. they're fun like and there's something really cathartic about watching stuff like that um and you know I'm also still the person who screams in the theater I'm the only one who screams in the theater <laughs> <laughs> at like these horror festivals like people are like yeah cut them up and I'm like oh my god, oh my god I can't watch um but I think that makes me a more fun audience. I, I agree. No, that's a it to well. Uh, Annabelle and I were at Boston Underground Film Festival last weekend, and she says hello. Sorry, she can't be here. Oh but hi. We were sitting next to someone who was screaming throughout all the short blocks, <laughs> and it was fun <laughs> until the one, and then I got beer all over my legs, and that that wasn't as fun. Oh, that that's part. not but, fun. <laughs> no, that's and not, to no, top I it mean, off, she didn't even say sorry or anything. I was like, oh. what the hell. But, yeah. That's just not cool, lady. <laughs> right, right. We'll find you. Um, no, that's not cool. You know, Boston. What are you gonna do? Yeah. I but it does. It Boston does add to the experience. I think. I think that's why a uh, horror and comedy are fun to watch with an audience because uh, there's more interaction. That's the other thing. Is like, there's a lot of horror movies that you know. I, if I had seen them alone, I, I don't know. I would have been like, ah, I don't know. Okay. But when I'm watching them with people, especially people who love horror, it is so fun. It is so fun. I mean, it's like the Rocky Horror, you know, experience for every movie because people just get super into it. But I'm always the one screaming and people laugh and it's just, <laughs> they're like, everyone's so numb to it because everyone's so used to it. But for right, me, right. it's all <laughs> so fresh. <laughs> Um, and it's something I'm, I'm a new horror fan, I guess. So I haven't been kind of desensitized, I guess yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if I honestly ever will be. I'm a scaredy cat. I am scared of everything, everything. So when people are like, I'm too scared to see your movies, like people who don't like horror movies, I'm like, do you understand that this is my movie? Like, do you think <laughs> that I would put something that's so scary that you can't watch? I can't make something. My mom's like, they're scary. They're really scary. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well. To you they are i guess but yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah uh colleen here in the chat uh this is fantastic information these festivals sound very fun they are uh todd and ken both say hello hello todd and ken uh colleen also says environmental ambiance in a theater or at home with good friends really can make a film totally changes the whole thing like there's some films that just have to be seen with other people that I think just just make it so much more. 
um, than watching them at home. Although when I watch them at home and they're horror Afraid. movies, everybody knows I have to watch them <laughs> during the day. <laughs> I call them daytime movies <laughs> that I have to watch during the day when the sun is out and, um, you know, I said, oh, there's my producer, Joseph. He said, psychological scary, always better than gore scary. Well, I don't know if it's always better. For me, it is, but everybody's got a different a different thing. Gory scary, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot I could, do, I could do these cool things now. Like, uh, yeah. Dust us up here, yeah. So fancy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Yeah. Um, Yo, yeah, oh, oh, speaking about my mother, if I can make an announcement. Yeah. Um, it's a casting announcement that we haven't announced anywhere yet. So this is an exclusive, Neil. I need like sound <laughs> effects and bells. And, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> and it's not even that, it's not that exciting, but it is to me. <laughs> so um, there's a voiceover role in the, in the, in the script that's for the, my character's mother and my mother begged me to play it. <laughs> She really wants to play my oh, mother I love in the movie. It's very um, exciting. So she will. Cena Abergel, my mom, is going to be playing my mother in the movie. It's going to be, it's voiceover only. It's, she, you won't actually see her, but um, I made her audition. I just want you to know. <laughs> I was like, I need you to read the lines. Well, there's no nepotism <laughs> involved. Yeah, no, she... no. I made her audition because I was like, I need to make sure this doesn't sound really bad. Um, but she actually did it so well that it upset me which is what happens in the scene and i was like oh i see how okay so this is gonna elicit some real emotions for me because i know that tone and i don't like that tone and i you know because the mother in the uh script is nothing like my mother just to to clarify the mother in the script is kind of blowing off her daughter's pain and my mom was like the opposite of that in every mm -hmm. possible way um, she wouldn't even think of saying the, the kinds of things that this mom says to her. But I, so I said to my mom, how are you doing this so convincingly when I know you don't feel this way about it? She goes, I'm thinking about other things in your life. I would like for you to move on from Interesting. <laughs> like ex-boyfriends and things that I would like for you to move past. And so I'm using that. And I was like, that's where I've heard that tone before. <laughs> it's about <laughs> those things. Wow. Your mom's um, a real actor. She's using my, uh yeah. My mom is a real actor. Oh, I'm going to plug in my computer. Um, yes, my mom is a fantastic actress. She's also a fantastic cook. And so we just released a new incentive today. Oh, um, cool. She has a Facebook page called Cena's Kitchen. Um, and she does recipes and cooking stuff on there. And she's like a phenomenal cook. And we're offering um, a homemade dinner for six uh, from Cena's Kitchen. My mom um you will not be sorry she will make it according to your specifications your allergies your preferences whatever you want it includes challah if you want to make it a shabbat dinner and in a bottle of wine um and but you have to live in la or you have to come pick it up in la i mean we're not gonna we can't pay for you to travel here and my mom said she can't deliver it but you come get it it will all be there for you you invite five people over and you have a beautiful dinner. Um, it's a thousand dollar pledge. Believe me, that's cheap for what you're gonna get. And it would help me and you're gonna get this delicious dinner and cooked by one of the actors from the film, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's wild. That's very, I like uh, when the incentives are a little bit out of the box and something fun like that. Yeah, she really wanted to do it too. She was like, what about Cena's Kitchen? I wanna cook for people. <laughs> she loves feeding people. My mom loves feeding people. Um, but yeah, she's very good at it. And her, if you go to her page on Facebook, Cena's Kitchen, you'll see all the beautiful things. Um, also on the Seed and Spark, there's a, I made a little collage of some of her food. Um, it's pretty amazing. She used to have a catering company and stuff like that. So it's really good, high quality stuff and kosher also, if that's something that is of interest to you. And there's only one available. She's like, I'm doing it once. <laughs> <laughs> so there's only one. So whoever gets it, gets it. But if you get it, you're very, very lucky. And you should go and bid on it uh, now. 
<laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, def definitely you should do that. I like that. It's very fun. Uh, what are some of the other? There's a lot of cool perks if you'd like to talk about those. Yeah. Um, oh, God, off the top of my head. Um, well, there's meetings with me, which I always feel like sounds ridiculous. Like, why would you spend $500 to talk to me? Because I'll talk to you for free. But if you want to help me out and You're helping talk out. to me, right, right. then it works out. Um, there's me, me meeting with Joseph. Um, there's also uh, a set visit where we're doing like a, a oh, supporter cool. kind of, uh, you can watch us film for a couple hours and then have a meal with the cast and crew. Also catered by Senior's Kitchen, who's catering our, our food on set. Yeah, she's at work. Um, she's cooking. She's, she's busy. My mom is and, yeah. working. My parents have both been very supportive with all of my films. They've, she's been the catering person for all three um, my dad lugs, you know, machinery and equipment and the van and gives us locations and he's always helping out. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we're going to announce a new one tomorrow, but I'll give you, a, I'll just tell you about it now. Um, we are going to be giving away one of the on-set baby dolls, the real life looking baby dolls from the set will be an incentive as well. Um, not the baby, sorry, Cooper's got to stay with his mom. Yeah. Although if, if he was up for grabs, I might take him. <laughs> um, he's very cute. No, don't worry, Lindsay. I won't steal your baby. Um, <laughs> did that sound convincing? Um, anyway, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, kind of auction off one of the dolls. Um, we also have oh, really excitingly is that oh, that's not a word, but anyway, we're making um. <laughs> I'm making a DVD of all of my films. So it'll have Jackson Love, Boo, and Still on it. It's called Love Scars. Ah, there it is. Boom. Um, <laughs> it has not been made yet because obviously mm -hmm. it's waiting for one more film. But I designed the cover. Um, and uh, and it has it's going to have all three films plus special features like um, behind the scenes videos, tr teasers, trailers, crowdfunding, pitch videos, et cetera, for all three films. Um, so if you donate $125, or sorry, pledge, we don't donate, we pledge. Uh, if you pledge $125 or more, so any of the any of the incentives after $125, you will receive that probably next year after the film is done and made. Um, and if you do it while we're still on the air today, I only have a few, so I don't know the limit, maybe like five or six, I will also give you a bloody disgusting world of death blu-ray that includes boo my film and a 17 other amazing horror oh, that's shorts awesome. um some some from like friends of mine like sergio pintero i'm saying his name wrong i'm sorry jeremy herbert vincent desanti patrick ray um there's some really nice stuff on here so i will include this with your dvd um if you do it before I get off air today. Um, and um, yeah, and then uh, what else do we have? We also have credits, obviously. You can get producer credits, IMDb credits. It's always nice to have. Um, and you get, and all of these will include special thanks. Um, if you wanna donate at the $25 level and up, we make a little indie hero support. Which I've seen a lot of my hero. friends are on there. Uh, Miriam, who, whose film just played at Boston Underground Film Festival, she's on there. And uh, Jason, yeah. uh, a lot of cool people. Jason Butera. Yeah, yeah, so many amazing, All almost all people I've met at film festivals um, who are just supporting me as filmmakers themselves. Um, and so we wanted to kind of shout everybody out with your picture and your name, and we'll post it all over. I really like that. I, I think that's a nice touch. Oh, good. It takes me a long time, so I'm glad you like <laughs> Yesterday, I think I did like 40 of them. It took me like four hours, <laughs> like no <laughs> joke, to like collect the pictures or whatever, but it's worth it. Um, yeah. I do all the graphics me. here on the, so I understand. Yeah, all that thing you know, takes a lot of times. Yeah, it takes so much time, but it's okay. I'm and like you were saying earlier, though, if it's something you love, uh, you know, the, it still takes time, but the, the time goes by faster. It, it does, because I honestly looked up and I was like, oh, my God, I haven't eaten lunch. Like, it's <laughs> 1 o'clock. I started at, like, 7 a.m. Like, what's happening? You know, I just I just kind of zoned out. But I want to thank people because they're, you know, pledging their hard-earned money to help me. And so if there's something I can do to help them, I, of course, want to do that. Um, and, uh, oh, another thing is if anybody, if anybody donates or pledges 
fifty dollars or more to anything before we get off air. The first person to do that because I only have one. Um, I have a pregnancy loss grief workbook that was made by a woman who had um, a late term miscarriage, and she made this workshop, this workbook with all sorts of things you could do to work through your grief. Aww. And it also comes with these affirmation cards. Like, it's okay to want to try again. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You're stronger than you think. It's okay to not be okay. Um, stuff like that. So whoever donates 50 or more, pledges 50 or more before I'm done, the first person to do that, I will send this to you ASAP. Um, and it's really, they're really, they're really amazing, beautiful things. You can also get them from her yourself. Um, I'm, I have all the links are on my page and on the still Facebook pages as, as well. Um, but it's cool to, you know, it's cool that women are helping other women who have gone through this. And um, I wish I had known about this when I needed it more, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad that's kind of why I'm doing this so that people who are going through it right now um, have the awareness that it's around. Also, March of Dimes sent me this amazing like bereavement package that was completely free. I'll put the link up later. Um, they sent like these like chimes. Oh, that's um, really nice. There's a there's like a card saying you know I'm sorry for your loss. There's a journal to write your feelings down and a little wildflower thing that you if you wanted to bury something and put some flowers with it you could. It sounds really kind of morbid, but um. But it's actually really sweet and I think really comforting. Um, I, I think I, I got it a little late for, for my purpose, but I hope that other people know about it. So we have all those links are on the Seed and Spark uh, page. And also I am going to be donating whatever equals 5% of our total at the end. I'm going to donate 5% of that amount to various child loss support organizations, child and pregnancy loss support organizations which are also listed there because I wanted to give back as well, not just take. Um, and I wanted to get these organizations some, you know, attention so that women knew they were out there. Cause honestly, when this happened to me, I was so lost. I, I couldn't like do research to try to find things that were going to maybe help me. You know what I mean? I was just like in pain. Um, but had I maybe heard about them before I would have known to go to get them or to have them. And I think some of them, you know, are doing really great work like counseling and they do, they get grocery gift cards for women who have lost babies and help them, you know, feed their families and other comforting type uh, kind of kinds of help. Um, so yeah, so you're helping me, but you're also helping other people who have gone through this by helping me um, and so hopefully we will make a lot of money and I can donate a lot of money and we can make this film and, uh, and I don't know, change the conversation around this topic and, and start a conversation around this topic. Cause I think it's important as depressing as it can be sometimes. <laughs> um, when you showed the DVD with the three movies, um, in your mind, do they share like a similar universe? Could they be like a trilogy of yours? Not necessarily, you know, like a, a continuing story. You but. know, I mean, they could, I suppose. Um, the the real through line through all of them, which is why I called it Love Scars, is different types of love um, and the horrific ways we sometimes go to attain, like lengths we go to attain it, right? Jax was about unrequited love and wanting love and needing love and doing anything I had to do to, like, get that love and that came from me for sure um and then boo was all about like even though you love somebody you know sometimes what you what you desire is stronger than the, the love that you have for somebody else and in her case obviously um it was blood <laughs> it was more important to her um being a vampire that's kind of tends to be how that goes Spoiler and with alert, this one but yeah Right. And um, yes, I know. Sorry. Well, I feel like it's been out for a while. I used to not say, but now I'm like, I'm just going to say, um, it's also on the back of that DVD. There's like a big picture. <laughs> um, at this point I can't contain it anymore. And then, um, for still, it's also like, she wants the love of this, of this baby and, and to love this baby. And of course, um, she can't have that. And so what does she do to try to 
how does she reconcile that and what does she do to try to get it back um which she does try to do in the film so um which is the horrific part <laughs> of it don't worry i promise you there will be no dead babies on screen i don't do dead babies on screen um nothing like horrific in that sense it's just more kind of psychologically horrifying i suppose just to empathize with her and um and the feeling of loss that she has um yeah <laughs> um yep. and anyway yeah and it's all very very expensive to do in la and that's why we need so much money i know some people say they do it for 500 bucks which i think they're lying i don't know how that's possible um uh you know or or maybe you own everything and you have friends who are willing to work for free and that's how you do it but in LA, this is everybody's job. You can't shoot anywhere without a permit. You need insurance. You need uh, location fees. Everybody wants to get and now, paid. Yeah, in a, in a post-COVID world, adds more, you know. And, and now everything is more expensive. Everything. Even for Boo, whatever was like the cost that I was like estimating, everything was more. Everything. What people wanted to get paid was more. Locations were more. Insurance was more. Permits are more. Everything's more. Um, and, you know, I like to try to do things as legitimately as possible and also pay people for their time and their work. Um, nobody's getting paid what they should be getting paid on this at all, but at least they're getting paid like a decent wage for the day um, that makes it worthwhile for them to be there and give give us their all and, um, and not feel like they're being taken advantage of because that happens a lot in this industry, a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. So it seems like a lot, but we're donating some. There are fees. Anyway, so even when we get to 18,000, which is our goal, um, please keep, if you can, please keep pledging because it's not enough and it's not even nearly enough. That's just our, our minimum. Um, and then to help with festivals and marketing and all the other stuff, we're definitely going to need more I'll money. Just, so. I was going to mention that, you know, even if uh, you get the, you know, the basic to just film the movie, but then there's so much after that. After, after like it's... almost more than what, the, probably more than what the movie costs, to be honest, like that you end up spending. Because every one of these film festival trips I go on, even if I do it the cheapest flight, the cheap, or I drive, or I stay at a cheap hotel, I mean, a minimum $1,000 each time. Minimum, at least. Mm -hmm. um, especially a lot of them are not on the West Coast. You, <laughs> they tend to all a lot be on the East Coast. So it just takes, you know, it's a lot of traveling and time. It's time off work. It's you know, all of that stuff, getting a cat sitter, <laughs> all of that stuff. So um, it's just a very expensive thing, but, um, and I do take a lot of that burden on myself, but anything anybody else can do to help is great. Sure. And I'm always donating to other people's projects too, because I know how it is. I get it. Yeah. Um, which so, you have you've actually helped out here for on um, without your head i try appreciate it yeah i mean i love look if somebody asks me i will give them something depending on who they are and what my financial situation is it'll that changes the cost like the amount sure, maybe sure. um but if you i mean i shouldn't say this but if you ask me you will get something from me <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of dms now <laughs> i yeah. know suddenly i have so many whoa my phone's blowing up um but on, you know, also for charity stuff, like, oh, my dog is sick or my, I just can't, I can't, I have to, I have to help. I just have to help. It's something that maybe it's my Jewish upbringing about Sadaka and I don't know. Um, also 18, I just wanted to say for the 18,000, the 18 is pretty much what we need, but it was also really chosen for a reason because 18 in um, Judaism is life. It like means life. And so I wanted to give life to my child through this film so it's kind of it was a good luck slash life affirming kind of a number and i felt good about it and i think we're almost at nine thousand right now and we're six days in so we're doing really well um hopefully it doesn't drop off so please don't stop <laughs> yeah <laughs> please because yeah. we're not there yet and, and right. if we don't reach 13 something we don't get any of it we need to use 80% of the 18 or we get nothing. So I do not want that to happen. That would be no, just like yeah, yeah. horrific. So, uh, um, I, yeah, I was not familiar with seed and spark.com. Uh, was there any, uh, reason why you went with it? Um, a couple of reasons. One, it's a female owned company and I like supporting that. Um, it's a smaller company than Indiegogo and Kickstarter. So I also like, it's more of a small business 
I don't know how small it is now. It's gotten bigger, but it, it started that way. Um, they also do a lot of crowdfunding for stories that matter. That's their like kind of thing. So it's about, you know, stories that have meaning in the world. And um, there's a reason why you're making them other than just like, oh, this is fun. I just want to make this for fun. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that was more in line with my project. Um, uh, although I will say it's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a clunky site and we've had some issues with it and people's, some people have donated and didn't go through and they had to do it again. And it was all very awkward and uncomfortable for me to have to ask them to, they're like, I donated. I'm like, you didn't. <laughs> and they're like, I did. And I'm like, oh, I didn't go through, <laughs> you know? So, um, so I'm a little annoyed about that. And that's something I have to think about for the future. But, um, if you did, if you pledged and you did not get a confirmation email, I'm sorry to say it did not go through and you're going to have to try again. You won't be charged twice. If you didn't get the email, it didn't go through. Um, and God forbid, if it did go through, I would just give it back to you. It's not a big deal. Sure, just, sure. just keep, keep it up, <laughs> keep it up. Cause we need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to play one of the videos here. I probably should have played it earlier, but. Uh, I talk we'll play... a lot, so. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's good. Uh, believe me, that's better than a guest who I ask a question and they say, yep. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, Thanks. I <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to name someone, but I won't name anybody. But uh, there's, okay. there, I've, I've had guests <laughs> like that. Uh, so here's, we're going to play the teaser. think that was playing right for me so i i turn I, I don't know if it was playing right for everybody else but it was uh it was uh skipping on mine but it i'll just put the, okay uh, okay maybe that was just on my end then i do have a uh, bad internet at the moment i'm not sure why but so i'm sorry i turned it off because it was not working for me but I'll, I'll put it up on the website it'll be easy for everyone to watch. yeah and it's also at the link you can see it there and it's on vimeo and no, right. it probably Facebook. was playing totally fine then. Now I feel like an ass for shutting it. Oh up. no, it's fine. You, I think you ended it right at the end anyway. It was oh, okay. like right ending. It was, it was good. Yes, All and right. that Michael and Sophia shot that with me, and 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 honestly helped me direct it too. They all had, they both had input, which was amazing input and really helpful, and they did a great job, um, helping me with that and. We had fun just running around Griffith Park in the forest. <laughs> oh, uh, very nice. I, I was there at Griffith Park with them when, uh, when I was out there. Oh, nice. Yeah. I just love being with them. They're just so, like, fun and creative and chill, and I am very excited to work with them. Very, very, very excited. Yeah. I only have one photo in my wallet, and it's a picture of Rose, one of their, oh, one of their dogs. Oh, my yeah. God. Their doggies are – I finally <laughs> met them, and I could not even – they are so cute so cute Ugh. yeah i agree i agree I, I don't have a picture of michael or sophia in my wall but i have rose. no as long as rose is in there that's yeah, all yeah. you really need yeah, you it know? might be a little weird maybe with but those I... teeth oh so cute <laughs> yeah yeah when i got to that to their place uh they told me rose maybe uh, um might not be the most social dog but uh rose was uh, a big fan of mine we get along right away so i can't remember which one it was maybe blanche someone one of them was licking my leg the whole meeting <laughs> they were like do you want me to move and I was you like, sure no. was it michael no, no yeah it was michael actually i'm sorry i was trying to i didn't want to, like i didn't yeah. want to tell anybody but yeah <laughs> oh, he's gonna love that so, uh, what's the run one do you know yet like rough, roughly what the run time of still would be it's honestly pretty short um it's probably going to be around nine minutes maybe 10 if we stretch it out a bit um it'll be the shortest thing i've done they progressively have gotten shorter Jax was 20 boo was 15. <laughs> this is i think i'm learning how short a short should be that's um, that I, that's an interesting actually topic because um i've seen i've seen shorts that, that work at longer but I think they're yeah, also I harder mean, to program too if you have if they're uh, over a certain amount of time. 
Right. Like, so with Jax, people were like, you need to cut 10 minutes. It's too long. <laughs> Michael said the licking was Blanche. Thank you. Blanche <laughs> really knows how to lick a leg. I gotta say. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it every minute of it. Um, uh, yes, they are hard to program. And people told me Jax was too long, but it got into like 60 festivals. So maybe it was maybe it would have gone into 90 if it if it, <laughs> if it was not as long i don't know but um i think if, if it's good enough people will program it um but it is long i've also been you know i've been a judge for film quest awards and stuff which is another great festival by the way film quest is amazing they throw amazing parties too i love film quest um and you know, when, the, when you're looking through the list of stuff to watch, and it's like eight minutes, seven minutes, uh, 25 minutes. You're like, oh, why, why, why are you making me watch 25 minutes? Like, that's like a long movie. Um, but if it's well done and you're like, you sit through it and it feels like it goes pretty quickly, it's great. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're like, oh, is this a feature? Because it feels like it's a 90 minute feature and it's never going to end. Um, but yeah, generally, I would say shorter is better. Um, but also you put all this work into something and you're like for 10 minutes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I've put in already weeks of work into this project weeks. Um, and we haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> we haven't even like started yet. Um, uh, and it's going to be like that quick, but it's okay. You know, that's what happened. Look, uh, I mean, Avengers, all that, those took years and years and years and years for what, two or three hours. Like, so it kind of works out to the same. I'm not comparing my movie to the other. No, I understand. I was going to say, all those movies now, <laughs> they're all like run times of three and a half hours. and yeah. I mean, I kind of I kind of get it with the amount of money and time. Like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, we have, into it, you're like, yeah. I don't want it to just be a one and a half hour movie. Like, <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know who said we have an excellent team on Steel. Um, that was, uh, Aaron, yeah, that's uh, Aaron Baracus. Oh, Aaron. Well, Aaron would know. I'm still not sure why so, some people have their names up and some don't, but uh, I can Weird. see him on, on the Facebook. Yeah. Okay, good. At least, yeah. Um, yeah, Aaron is also a fantastic writer, editor, director, filmmaker in his own right, and he worked with Sophia and Michael. And actually, I got to do the coolest thing on his movie, Half Cocked, was he asked me if I would play Jax from my movie in his movie, like as if it lived in the same universe which was just the coolest thing ever. Um, unfortunately, the day we shot, I had like 104 degree fever oh, and I was yeah. really sick. Um, but we were shooting at my dad's work, which is the same place we shot Boo. And I had to be there or they wouldn't be able to shoot there anyway. Um, so I literally like was sleeping on the floor with a pillow and a blanket and my fever. And then they like would call, they called me out to do my little, my little scene. And like Sophia did it in one take, and Aaron they did it in one take, and they're like, "We got it." I'm like, "Are you sure?" And they're like, "Go <laughs> lay down." <laughs> um, but it was so cool to have Jack kind of live in this other movie. Um, and honestly, if you want Jacks in your movie or Boo or any of these people, please, I'm there. I'll come. I'll be that character. I'm happy to do it. It's so fun. Um, and it just kind of feels like it makes us all more connected. And I like I like the feeling of all of our films being connected in that way. Um, and it's fun. It's just yeah. fun. Yeah, I was yeah. happy. Uh, I'm a, uh, Aaron's a really good guy, uh, in addition to being talented. So that's always a good plus. Well, but yeah, I was really happy to see you. My, yeah, he saved Boo. I tell people all the time. He gave me equipment I needed at the last minute that I just, I don't even know how I would have like survived that shoot if he hadn't done what he did. Um, so he's just also a great person, really great person. So many great people I've met at these festivals, like, like people I've only known what for like five or six years, maybe max. And I feel like I've known them my whole life. I feel like they've been my best friends since I was a kid. Like, like, and, and people who've gone above and beyond for me in so many ways, um, with money, with time, with just support, with love, with messages, with whatever, um, sending me cards, you know, after I posted about the, the miscarriage, like sending me like, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss and, um, you know, stuff that people in my life that I feel like should be more attentive to me aren't, <laughs> but these people really care. And it's so awesome. And I, I love the community that I've, you know, been included in. And honestly, it's mostly the horror community, which is another reason why I love horror now 
because I love the people. The people in it are not at all whatever you would think these people are going to be if you don't know. Um, but I'm like, oh, these are all of the people who got bullied in school like me, people who were felt left out, people who felt different or not the same or whatever. And, um, and they know what it's like to be not included. And so they actually tend to be the most inclusive um, and the most kind and the most giving um, because they know what it feels like to, to not have that. Um, or at least that's my perception. And that's a very general perception. No, I, I totally agree. When um, I noticed that right away when I first started going to, uh, before I went to the festivals, I was going to the conventions. And, I, you know, it, there's a lot of people with, with black crazy shirts and lots of tattoos. And maybe right, some people they think they're certain. You know? Right, right. <laughs> but uh, and then there's like nerdy people. Uh, but everyone's very accepting because I think uh, they all have a common love. And uh, like you. I think you put it uh, very well as people who know what it's like to be kind of an outcast. So they're accepting of everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I grew up being bullied and all of that stuff, feeling different, nerdy, whatever. Um, and I didn't realize that this was, these were my people. I just, I think I've been so scared. I'm so scared of everything <laughs> that I never got involved with those people because I'm scared of the movies and I'm scared of the, like all of the stuff. So I never found those people, but I feel like now I've found my people in the least expected place ever for me because if you told me even six years ago that i would be like really involved in the horror film community i would have laughed in your face i would have been like you're crazy that is never gonna happen like never in a million years and here i am doing it because you know, and I'm and I'm just so glad because they're they're honestly my best friends, like honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice to say. But I, and I agree. So uh, and plus when I was growing up, you know, without social media, like I, I didn't know anyone else who loved like Basket Case and the stuff and, and Motel Hell. Like, you know, these were weird movies that I I went and rented on VHS, but like there wasn't a crowd of people that I could even get involved in that, that like these movies. Right. And get together with those people and talk about it or watch it or whatever. And like yeah. now you can, you can find those people from all over the world and, you know, get into it, which is super cool. Yeah. So actually, since your mom's in your movie and you weren't uh, into horror movies when you were growing up, wh what did she think when you first started to make uh, horror movies? Uh, she still is not thrilled. And even <laughs> with this one, she keeps telling me, um, can you keep can you explain to people this is not like your horror movies? This is a different kind of movie. And I was like, but mom, it really is still kind of a horror movie. She's like, but it's different. And it was very important to her that it's different. Um, she, look, she doesn't have any, there's no like judgments against it. She's also kind of a scaredy cat like me. She doesn't like to see people getting killed. And right. um, so for her, I, I get <laughs> a lot of- It's very different from my mom. But yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Is she into that stuff? Yeah, that's how, that's really how I was. I started watching horror movies was uh, my mom uh, would take me. So. See, that's, all, that's probably the reason I didn't. Because my mom, also, my parents are not big on roller coasters and like that. So I think I got a lot of my fears from not having do done those things most of my life. I'm not blaming them, but sure, it's, sure. Just, it's the way you're raised. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It just wasn't something we did. Um, I saw a child's play when I was really young and I didn't sleep for like weeks. And then I saw The Shining and I was like, never again, nothing again, <laughs> never again, like not doing it. Um, and it took me years to watch another horror movie of any kind. Um, so, and when we did Jack's, my mom was on set and it was the first one and you know, it's it's a horror movie. Um, and I did the scene where I'm killing somebody in a bathroom and my parents were on set and there's a picture of them looking at the monitor and they're both like this. I mean, like just holding their faces. My mom's like covering her eyes. And I remember I came out from doing the scene and my mom goes, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and then my dad goes we did not raise you like this and i was like it's acting you guys like relax i'm not a murderer like i'm just pretending they're like no 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 i've seen that face before i've seen that look before and they just like to them it's just like what are you doing <laughs> and they're also you know pretty religious you know jews it's just not in their it's not in their world um so but 
I have to say to their credit, they're on set, they're helping, they're cooking, they're lugging, they're promoting, they're doing stuff for my movies and telling people about it and helping me raise money. And like, it's nothing that interests them, nothing. But, but I interest them and I'm important to them. And so they always are supportive of me. I could be making anything and they would support me. Um, and so they're just amazing. I mean, also, you know, getting pregnant and not being married, you know, for some people in their position, that would have been like a big, like embarrassment almost mm -hmm. even, you know, and they were like so supportive and there for me and like just, like not for one second do they make me feel bad or anything like never and they just were like i don't know i talk so much about how amazing they are but they really are like i, I mean they out of their comfort zones all the time for me and my siblings and um yeah they're just kind of amazing like that so she's she still says to me can't you just make a comedy or like a nice romantic movie <laughs> or um and i was like mom mine aren't even really horror movies like if you compare them to horror movies they're like hardly horror movies she's like they're horror movies <laughs> they're horror movies like they're all you know um yeah, don't show her do terrifier want... too or anything so no, she, she, well, what she doesn't like is she comes to the festivals and she has to see other horror movies <laughs> in the right, block. Right, right. So she'll sometimes, she started to wait outside and she's like, come <laughs> get me when it starts because she can't handle it. Uh -huh. it like it's too much for her. Um, she, we saw one that was, I think it was called uh, the, the Conductor or something. And it was like, I can't remember the name of it. And it was just like someone cutting up a body. I mean, like the whole movie was just this body being cut up. And my mom was like beside herself. I was like, go outside, just get out. <laughs> she looked like she was going to throw up or pass out or I don't know, but she just could not handle it. Um, so now she's like, do I have to come to the screenings? Can I just, I support you. I'm going to support you from home. I just don't I can't see the other movies. I can hardly watch your movies. Um, but, you know, I've gotten better at watching them. So I guess that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, well, it's nice that they still support it, even even if it's not their, their genre. It's No. I mean, they, you know, they love comedy and stuff like that. I do, hopefully, one day I want to write their story, their love story. Oh, they met nice. during, like, wartime in Israel um, and they have a beautiful love story and it's like a sweeping wartime romance type of a thing. And one day I'm going to write that story and hopefully make it. Um, and it will be so different than anything else I've ever done, but it's such a cool story and they have such a great love. And I just, I hope one day I get to, to tell their story. That's very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, still will be coming. And uh, you can go and uh, help out on seedandspark.com slash fun slash still short film. And we have the links everywhere. I think I've been scrolling across the bottom here. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah, on Facebook, it's still a short film. You'll find us there. Um, and I'm posting constantly. <laughs> I'm probably losing friends for that. Uh, anyway, we're trying, I, you know. Just give me 24 more days of posting <laughs> like crazy. And then I promise I'll just take a huge break from social media because we'll be in pre-production and I'll be way too busy anyway. Um, and we just, we have a really great team. Everybody is so talented. We have an amazing production designer, line producer, makeup and hair. Um, our cast, Rache Thomas, she's playing the mother who confronts me in the park and kind of triggers this, this nightmare. Um, and she's going to be in it. Her daughter's making a cameo in it. Um, the baby, Mr. Cooper Eakins is going to be in it. Oh, I can't wait to see him. He looks so cute. Um, and my mom is going to be in it, which is just amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but I no, did I think... make her audition. She really did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good extra. The, the mom edition on the, uh. On the on the Blu-ray when it comes out. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that would be cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can watch my pitch video that tells yes. my story. You heard some of it, but that has my story on there too. And, yeah. And uh, Catherine Capazzi is doing the uh, the score, oh, which I'm very excited yes. about. Yes, so talented. I cannot believe I'm getting to work with her finally. Um, she's 
I can't wait. I'm very excited. I'm trying to think who else I didn't mention. Um, I don't know. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be really fun. We have a really cool location. It is an expensive location, but it's going to be worth it. Um, and it's this whole compound ranch place that's really awesome. And it's going to be beautiful. And uh, I'm excited. We're shooting Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully, <laughs> assuming the money comes through. Um, and I'm sure we'll be fine. And um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. And and you're welcome to come visit us, Neil, if you're I would love around. To, yeah. Yeah. Come, come to the set and hang out or something. I don't know. I would love to if I can make it out there. I'm all on the other end. I know. You're end, so but... far away. Yeah. I know. I went to BU. So whenever you're walking around Boston, I'm like, oh, I miss it. I love, <laughs> I love Boston. Boston love is Boston. very cool, yeah. 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 All right. Well, it's been very fun to talk. Uh, I'm actually wearing a Boston Underground Film Festival shirt. Oh, nice. I need to. I want to get into that festival so bad. I have not. I have yet to get in. Well, I want I to too. But yeah, yeah. But the uh... yeah. <laughs> One day. Yeah. <laughs> we won't talk about. That. Yeah, I was. I, I heard about that. Uh, I uh, the short film I did with Michael Sophia Umbilicus Dos Sidera was was in it. And that was uh, it, seven days before it was going to play. Uh, it was er, it was canceled because of COVID. It was the first year. Oh, that's so the that was worst. Bye, Bay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, but that's it a really great, great little documentary. I love that. Thank I you. love that movie. <laughs> I'm very I think proud I of it. saw it. I saw it at. Happy oh yeah, Family. that's right. I met you. That's yeah. when I saw it, and that's where Boo premiered. Boo had its premiere at Hampton Sands. That was um, that was my premiere too. So that's very cool. Yeah, it was super cool, and I loved that festival because it was just like local people. I don't even think there were other filmmakers there. It was such a small, but it was so amazing because it was just like local people who love the movies and want to see it, and that was mm -hmm. like the best. It was the best. It was the best. And I love George and I just, it was the best. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. No, that's a great one. I like, um, I like the festivals that have that, uh, community feel. Um, yep. Uh, yeah. Buffalo has a community feel, South Texas. Uh, there's a lot of them. Even ones that are real big are cool to be there, obviously. But, uh, sometimes they don't have, really have that community feel where like, uh, ones where they're usually on one screen There's something about them. Yeah, you know, uh, I went to one last year called Cordillera International Film Festival. It's in Reno, which Reno is it's a rough little town. But um, but the festival was amazing, and they paid for a hotel, and they catered three meals a day for the filmmakers, and they had a large uh, audience of local Reno people who love films and who came to the films when it was so it wasn't just filmmakers showing films to other filmmakers right, which is right. fine yeah. but it was nice to have like real people who are not filmmakers be there and and see your film and talk about your film with you and just be a fan and not and not be coming from like a filmmaking perspective mm -hmm. it was really fun yeah and i'll mention real quick to happenstance so uh there we met uh both our the shorts there premiered and I hadn't talked at that time two years to Annabelle. We'd stopped talking, and uh, we didn't know both of us were going to be there, and so we were avoiding each other. And and apparently, I didn't know at the time, but she went to film my movie, and she was going to like blast it on Facebook. Look at this stupid movie Neil made, and then she really liked it. And then we ran into <laughs> each other, and then we started talking, and we started hanging out ever since. So. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. That so many great things happened at that that particular festival that day. Um, morbidly beautiful gave me an award. Yeah. It was like the whole Elvira thing with the video, and I got that hamburger. The yeah, the hamburger is sweet. I'm very jealous burger. of that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> For people who don't know, thing. we mean a statue. It's not like she doesn't still have a cheeseburger. Not a me. real hamburger. Although I now I want a hamburger. I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't eat dinner. So I'm like, hmm, that burger looks pretty good right now. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just a good time. Yeah. But if anybody has questions about festivals, and you're like, I don't know if this is a legit festival, should I waste my time, my money, whatever, feel free to send me a message. I don't mind if I don't know you. Like if you ask me, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to, to give you what I know. I've been to hundreds of festivals at this point, And I know a lot about a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, this has been great. Uh, I always love talking to you. It's always fun. And I'm looking forward to your film. Thank you. You're going to get an indie hero sh uh, shout out for this amazing interview. I just oh, have to well, make I more tomorrow. Right. Yeah, of course. Of well, I course. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me on and, and letting me go on and on. Yes, of course. You're always welcome. So <laughs> uh, to play us out, uh, I'm going to play music of the month here. The um, so we had two Nick Cage did our theme song and the B-Movie Monsters will play us out. So, uh, and we'll be back next week. Bye. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs>